I hate to spoil the party, the party. Uh, of yeah. journalists. <laughs> But I think the most appalling example of bias by... And, and I've, I, look, I couldn't stand Gillard in many respects, and I don't like Rudd much either. Um, but I have never seen uh, in Australia in modern times um, a more biased uh, view of the world that came uh, from the preponderance of the media, the antipathy to Julia Gillard, who, by the way, put up with the most outrageous misogyny... Um, that uh, this country has seen and was embarrassingly so. You look at across the ditch, Helen Clark, Prime Minister for nine years, and because New Zealand's a more progressive country, it's not such a big deal. That was the first issue. The second issue is this. Um, before Christmas last year, Justice Stephen Rares brought down a decision in a matter involving uh, Mr Ashby and Mr Slipper, in which he said about Mel Bruff, a former Howard government minister and who uh, aspires to be um, on the front bench of uh, a, an Abbott government, that he and uh, the, Mr Ashby and one other person had effectively misused the court process for their own political ends. That is a, an extraordinary finding against someone who wants to be a Minister of the State. Now, th that judgment was a cogent, clear judgment, which came out, I think, on the 13th of December. Other than Margot Kingston and Independent Australia, a website, and I think Crikey might have as well, mm. no journalist has followed this up. I yeah. find that extraordinary. I don't particularly ha have any views about Mr Bruff, but I find that outrageous. If he'd been a Labor minister, though, you betcha, they would have gone for him and said this is part of this, you know, dysfunctional, corrupt government, hopeless... I, I think I think it's, it's really stark, because it wasn't as though this judgment uh, uh, had any caveats around it. Read the judgment. Uh, it, and it has no, it was a very damning judgment. I wonder, Greg, though, whether that had something to do with the timing of that story breaking. Because I remember when that oh, happened. Well, you, you leave it alone. If it's a, if it's in if it's in December, you leave it alone. But you just... don't come back to it in January. What do you forget? Well, <laughs> yep. No, that, I just want. I just think I mean, that is it, story. Is that, the, is, that, is that the way the Canberra Gallery operates? It, what you, you close it off? Okay, it was just before Christmas. Forget about the fact that it's a damning indictment of someone who wants to be on the front bench, made by a senior federal court judge. That we forget about it on December 31, and we start off with a new slate. I mean, that's ridiculous. No, I think it's a fair point, Greg, but I just, I'm just saying I think if that story had broken in, in January or February or March, it might have had more momentum. Kerry ann do you want to respond Look, to what I, Greg was saying? That story was around for a long time, and Peter Slipper, Peter Slipper was treated disgracefully by the media, mm. as was Craig Thompson. Yeah, I agree. They, I agree. Were to be, I agree with they were judged to be... I they were judged to be guilty. I, I do they were judged I... to be guilty of all manner of wrongdoings before they've even had their day yeah. in court, and, and yet Mel Bruff... Mel Bruff has got out scot-free. I, yeah. I think it was outrageous conduct on the and part of the And there was evidence also um, that was given by Steve Lewis that was found to be... Uh, the judge didn't believe him. Also, that okay. the, the uh, journalist... The quick quick response from you, Joe, on that, on that one. Oh, this is a ball-tearing yarn. Um, if, if Greg's a stranger to vexatious uh, legal action, I, I mean, we see it all the time. We're usually on the receiving end of it in the media. Um, people take uh, matters to court for all sorts of reasons. Often it's for personal reasons. Often it's for political reasons. They don't um, want to be government ministers. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I'm no fan of him. I don't know if I've ever met Mel Braff. I'm no fan of him. I don't really care if he becomes a minister or gets into parliament or not. Um, the idea well, you that should care. The, I, what the, a idea, found, the idea that... The, well, the people of his electorate can decide that. The idea that Peter Slipper and Craig Thompson, though, are somehow innocent victims in this whole affair after some of the allegations... That's not what I said. Well, That's the, not what I said. The idea that they've been it's not what I said. The idea that they've been mistreated terribly or they've been treated unfairly they have been. when that when there is there is you know, more than a thousand pages of findings in, a, in the, the Fair Work report against what Craig Thompson did with a low paid workers' money. Uh, there's a countless amounts. That's not of, a court of law, though. Fair Work Australia. That's it's not a court of law. law. It's a, it's it's a, not a court of law, yeah. right, and so it's the a media say, Right, OK, so the Fair Work Commission hands down its report and the media should say, oh, we're just not going to report on that. No, we're no, not no, but it's going through the legal processes no, no, now. No, the presumption of innocence applies mm. and he's entitled to have his day in court to test the veracity of those statements. Yes, they were reporting in the same way that police report. And rest assured that when he does get to court, we'll be reporting it very enthusiastically. All right, let's draw a line on that. Well, I'm sure you will and you'll be trashing his reputation further. I don't know if that's possible, Greg. OK, coming up soon, we're going to hear from a, a policeman, a Victorian detective, who was uh, investigating a pedophile priest in the 1960s and 70s. His, uh, his investigation was uh, buried. It was covered up by what he calls the Catholic Mafia. We're going to hear more about that story coming up soon.